Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali. Today we're going really old school. We are making one of my childhood favorites. And I, I, I made this for IG a couple weeks ago and I just hashtagged, if you know, you know. So many of you DM telling me that this pasta with cauliflower brought you back so many childhood memories um, and it just warms my heart. These are my favorite recipes to share with you. Um, just because I feel like, obviously it's delicious but there's such like emotion connected to it for me, these kinds of recipes that it just makes me even that more excited to share them with you. It is the most delicious, simple, it's humble food. It is orecchiette with cauliflower and it is absolutely divine. The cauliflower is going to go into a food processor um, and you're gonna take this cauliflower and you're going to go ahead and pulse it until it's really finely chopped because here's the thing about this particular recipe. The cauliflower almost becomes creamy in a way. I don't know, you just gotta trust me. It's just so good. Love it, love it, love it. If you love these kinds of recipes that I share with you, I'm just saying when the time comes, you're gonna love my next book. That's where I'm gonna leave you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish chopping them up and adding them in. Doing this in just a few batches, it's a pretty large head of cauliflower. Just get it going until it resembles this. Very fine. See that? Like cauliflower rice. Add a good amount of olive oil to a large skillet or a Dutch oven or whatever your heart desires. You're gonna take a few garlic cloves. We're gonna smash them, but we're not, we're not gonna chop them. We just wanna infuse it with all of that flavor. And when you smash and not chop, you just get a much more mild, delicious garlic flavor rather than a really pungent one, which, you know, I said this before, but a lot of people think Ital with Italians, garlic, garlic, garlic. However, to real Italians, like the ones in Italy, um, they only do a clove or two and then they usually will take it out before adding, you know, the next ingredients. So once that starts to get really nice and sizzly and delightful, which will only take a few seconds, look at all that cauliflower. This is essentially just going to be your sauce. This is going to be the, you know, the bulk of the sauce and it will cook down so much. It looks like a lot, but it cooks down a ton, just trying to get it all out of there. Come on, compact it in there if you have to. And if there's a couple pieces that are like not as finely chopped, it's all good, don't worry about it. It does make a mess though, so there's that. Don't use frozen cauliflower rice for this because it's just not gonna be the same. It's way too, like, it's too, con like, too much water in that and it's just not gonna cook the same. So just go ahead and let that garlic just start to sizzle. I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the garlic. It's done its job at this point. It's infused the olive oil. And I'm gonna add the cauliflower. Like I said, it's a lot, but it's gonna cook down so much. And that olive oil is just imperative for this recipe. You see that like, the cauliflower kind of soaks it all up, but it gives it so much flavor. And as it cooks, it kind of releases a little bit and then it just gets everything going and being all gorgeously browned and amazing. Now, in total, the cauliflower at this stage, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, is going to cook for about, I would say, 20 minutes. Um, which sounds like a really long time, but this is the perfect time to get your pot, fill it with water, bring it up to a boil, and when you've got like seven or eight minutes left, that's when we add the pasta to the boiling water. So I'm just gonna go ahead, keep my aki, my cauliflower, stir it, stir it around every once in a while. But for the most part, don't stir it too much. Just kind of let it do its job. You can see I kind of like to flatten it out like so like that. Let it get beautifully colored. I'm just gonna clean up. The rest of the ingredients we'll need are not very many, but I'm telling you this is one of those recipes that it's humble food, so it just takes a few very good ingredients and it's going to be phenomenal. Cauliflower mixture is looking great. My water is up to a boil. I'm gonna go ahead and add my orecchiette. 
something I didn't think of to tell you, um, Oreketa typically takes a little bit longer to cook than most um, like medium to shortcut pastas. So this is probably gonna take closer to 10 minutes, which is fine because this is gonna go a little bit longer anyway. So just a heads up on that. But you can also use medium shells, anything that really kind of holds the sauce, like holds that bit of cauliflower in that is perfect. You can use any shape you want. Don't let me tell you what to do. I'm just saying. Orecchietta is just the way to go for me. Add it to boiling water. I also realized that orecchiette, uh, for the most part, comes, for the most part, not, not in every brand, but for the most part, they come, instead of a standard one pound box, it comes in a 12 ounce box. So this recipe cooks an entire 12 ounce box, so that way you don't have any weird amount left over. Not that that really matters, but you know, Try to be conscious of that because nobody wants two ounces of orecchiette left because then that doesn't really serve a purpose for a whole lot of things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep this on low until the pasta is just about ready. This is looking fantastic. Again, we're not looking for texture. We are just looking for that cauliflower to practically melt into a sauce when we combine it with lots of parm, starchy water, and it is gonna be phenomenal. So just let that go low and slow while the pasta cooks and then we pull it all together. In the meantime, I'm gonna just grate a lot of parm. Let me find my parm. <laughs> Cauliflower looks good. I've got a little skillet back here with a tiny bit of olive oil and I'm gonna go ahead and toast up some panko breadcrumbs. And the reason I do that is a lot of times I do that just like they did in the old days. Back in the day, my nonna used to say that they did this because they didn't have, they couldn't afford Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and just toast up some panko breadcrumbs for a little crunch because I feel like Balance and flavor is good, it's so important. But oftentimes, balance of the textures is just as equally important. This dish is very, very sort of one dimensional in terms of texture, so I just need a little something crispy. You know what I mean? I'm adding my orecchiette right in. I'm actually also gonna steal some of that starchy cooking water. I want all of that, because it's gonna pull it together. This is so good, so, so good. Sometimes I cook so much, obviously, because of my job, <laughs> that sometimes I'll make something that I haven't made in so long simply because there's only so many meals to eat in a week. <laughs> there's only so much cooking I can do and then I cook something and I go, wow, why haven't I made that in so long? A little parsley, because it needs it. Parm, because it needs it. And now I'm just gonna cook this all together, basically for just a minute or so, maybe a couple minutes. The breadcrumbs are looking good because that starchy cooking water is going to get that cauliflower. See what it's doing? The starchy water is basically turning the cauliflower into a cream sauce, which is exactly what you want. I need a good grinding or two or three of black pepper. My panko is looking smashing, darling, smashing. The black pepper in. This is gonna be fantastic. And we're nearly there. That's pretty much done. You can leave it like this, like nice and flat, for a couple minutes. It'll get a little crispiness on the bottom. But the whole purpose of this recipe is different than my crispy pasta with broccoli. Totally different. The whole purpose of this is to get that cauliflower to turn into almost like a cream sauce, like I said. But you can have a little bit of both. Best of all worlds, you know what I mean? No one's judging. I'm gonna turn this off because I'm hungry and I'm ready. I'm gonna use the same bowl that I had my pasta in because why not? This is like childhood, it is heavenly. If you hear jumping, by the way, it's sous chef. Some of the crispy breadcrumbs on the top, use a spoon, perhaps a little more parm, a little more pack pepper, and it might not look like much. It's certainly not the prettiest dish to photograph. I will give you that, but, it is a dish that feeds me in more than just one way. It 
feeds my soul, brings me back to a time and place. And I think oftentimes it's things that are not the prettiest to look at and it's things that are not the most photographable that just do that. Pasta fazul, no one wants to photograph that. Lentil soup, nobody wants to photograph it, but you're gonna wanna eat it. It's perfection. It's perfection. The cauliflower, it's mild. The black pepper kind of ties it all together. The crunchiness of the breadcrumbs, it is phenomenal. It's easy, it's simple, basic, divine. Go to laurainthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me. If this, if this recipe hit all the feels for you, let me know down below. Or if you grew up eating it a different way, I'd love to know. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.